Hey, what is up guys, Seth here, and welcome to the preview to Aromas or Aroma Mages. This is the new archetype in the OCG set, Clash of Rebellions, and it looks to be a beauty. I love this deck, the way that the thought process of it, and the way it requires you to think about what you're going to summon, and how you're going to use effects, and when you'll use them. So this looks like to be a really fun archetype, maybe tier, tier 2 or Tier 3. Um, I doubt I'd reach Tier 1. And I'm not going to overhype it and say this is tier 0 and it's going to reach worlds, first place, shit like that. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to tell you how it is. It is a solid, balanced deck and very different and refreshing to see no power creep in this deck. So, um, so far this is the cards that we've got. We've got four cards, um, one of which is a field spell. The rest are monsters. So, um, sorry, five cards. I meant five cards. We have five cards at the moment. And we'll see with the trap support if there's going to be anything else, but you know, um, I just predict more support for this. And I will do a guide and probably, you know, um, a deck profile to this in later days. So if you guys do like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, it does help out. And let's get into the archetype. So, Aroma Garden is a field spell. Um, and once per turn, if you control an Aroma monster, you can gain 500 life points. Also, all monsters you control will gain 500 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's next turn. The important thing about this is, most of this card's uh, beauty comes from the fact that you will have more life points than your opponents. And that comes from, you know, for, definitely from TCG, um, being very abusive and ignoring life points. Like, ignoring the, the game's idea that the more life points you have, the harder it is for you. But that's a TCG mindset. That is a TCG mindset. People like to give people life points from Opsort Goblins, like to sacrifice their own life points from things like um, Khalif or Scout. Things like that. So this deck takes advantage of that and crams it down TCG's throat. And I like that. I like that. So the other part of the effect is if an Aroma monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect is sent to the graveyard, gain 1000 life points. Now, the beautiful thing about this deck is the monsters. The monsters are key, and also all monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense. So it does open up to Ragnar Zeros on your opponent's turn, but all monsters gain, the, the, you know, it's not just plant type monsters, it's not just aroma monsters, it's all monsters. So you can XYZ summon to your heart's content if you like. This is the first card, and it's a beauty. I think this card has a lot of potential to be just broken, just straight up broken. So, she doesn't look like much at the start. She's a light, she's a plant, she, her name's Aramage Jasmine, and she has 100 attack, 1,900 defense. Um, and her effect is, while your life points are higher than your opponents, during your main phase you can normal summon one plant type monster in addition to your normal summon set, set Aramage Jasmine. You can only use this effect once per turn. So. Um, it's like Evil Swarm Caster or something like that, it's, it's solid enough. Um, and this is where it starts to get broken, once per turn if you gain life points, draw one card. Now I'll explain the combo guys. If your opponent controls a Necros card, or an XYZ card, or a Synchro card, and you have three cards in your hand, one of which is Jasmine, Aramage Jasmine, one of which is Aram uh, Aroma Garden, and the other one is an Infernal Reckless Summon. Oh sorry, no, 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 not Jasmine. The three cards are Aroma Garden, Lone Fire Blossom, and uh, Infernal Reckless Summon. That are the three cards. You normal summon Lone Fire Blossom, of course. Special summon one of the Jasmines. Use Infernal Reckless Summon. Infernal Reckless Summon gives you two more Jasmines. You use Aroma Garden. Aroma Garden will let you gain 500 life points. You draw three cards. Now let's say one of those three cards is something like Emergency Provisions, or Mystic Walk, or uh, Draining Shield. Draining Shield and all that, those cards will help you gain LP on your opponent's turn. So you set one of those cards down, and then you draw three cards on your opponent's turn, because you activated it on your opponent's turn. It is a once per turn effect, but it's a once per turn on either player's turn effect. It's not just once during your turn, you can get, if you gain the LP, draw one card. It's once per turn. If you gain LP, draw one card. So it's a mandatory effect as well. It won't miss timing, and it's an if effect. So that's the beauty of the that's the beauty of the card. It's so good. 
and it has a lot of uh, potential to be really broken. The next card is Aramage Kananga. Now, if you're interested, guys, look up a card called Naturia Fruit Fly. This deck reminds me a lot of this. So, this card is a plant. Um, it's at level 3, 1400 attack, 1000 defense. However, it's going to reach 1900 attack with that. Um, and its effect reads while your life points are higher than your opponent's, all monsters your opponent controls lose 1500 attack and defense. So, if you have three of these cards with Infernal Reckless Summon, just the same way that I said before, Lone Fire Blossom, Infernal Reckless Summon, you can gain uh, three of these cards, your opponent loses 1500 defense because it will lose 500 defense or attack for each of these uh, Kanangas you control and you'll control three of them because you summoned uh, with Infernal Reckless Summon. Then the other part of this is, once per turn if you gain life, life points, target one spell or trap card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. So do we, ha do we see an anti uh, spell fragrance in here? Do we have the side decking available for that? I think so. We have Khalifort Scouts and Sakali Forts and you know uh, any th other pendulum cards and then you just bounce them back to the opponent's hand, they don't gain the effects from them and then you activate any spell fragrance, they're not pendulum summoning anymore. And that's the beautiful thing about it, that is the beautiful thing about it. So you can keep bouncing your opponent's cards, even on your, uh, your opponent's turn. Let's say even on your opponent's turn, if he sets a few cards, you gain life points, you can bounce three cards, return them all to the hand at the end phase, and then he has no back row to counter your uh, push. And I like that, I think I like that. That sounds fun, it sounds that sounds balanced, but it sounds fun. So the next card is Arrow Mage Rosemary. She's the she's the janky one, but she has the most attack, of course. That's how you know decks work these days. The janky one always has the most attack. So while your life points is higher than your opponent's uh, life points, if a plant type monster you control attacks, your opponent cannot activate monster effects until the end of the damage set. What makes that so good? Well, uh, simple. Necros Valkyris. Necros Valkyris is a card that is very abusive towards, you know, uh, having an empty field. You know, if you have an empty field and you have Necros Valkyris, and, uh, then you just use that to defend yourself. You use that as an abusive way to avoid taking damage for that turn. But this deck goes, no, 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 no. I control a plant type monster, and if it attacks, you're not activating that Valkyrie, you're not activating Swift Scarecrow, you're not activating Battle Fader, you're not even going to activate Necro Gardener. You know, if I attack, you're not getting that. You're just not going to get that. So, you're not activating any monster effects when I attack. And that's the beauty of the deck. I think that's very beautiful of the deck. So, I like this card, but, you know, it's an anti Necros card. And it's an anti Fire and Ice Hand card. So, I kind of like that idea as well. I like that aspect. Um, and then the other effect is the janky one. Once per turn, if you gain life points, target one face up monster on the field, change its battle position. Why is that crap? Because, well, it's just going to prevent your opponent taking damage. But, at the same time, it might help you kill the card. But, here's where this card comes in. If you control Rosemary and Bergamot, or Bergamot, or whatever her name is, uh, when while your life points are higher than your opponents, if a plant type monster you control attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponents. So there's always the ability to inflict damage in this deck. And that's what's good about it is they've thought it through. They have thought it through, and I like that. So she's a level six. She's got 2,400 attack, 1,800 defense. So you know, Monarch Storm Force, anyone? Monarch Storm Force? Yeah, sounds solid to me. Um, but you've got Lone Fire as well, so you can use Lone Fire with this bitch as well. So here's the beautiful thing about it is, and most decks never reach this kind of attack, not in two cards. If you've got a Roma Garden, and you've got this card on the field, once per turn if you gain life points, this card gains 1000 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's turn. But also on top of that, you can gain 500 life points, and then all monsters gain 500 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's next turn. You can have a 3,900 attack card on the field just by having a Roma Garden and this card. That is so good, it's unbelievable, and it's until the end of your opponent's turn, so he's not going to want to attack. Sure, that opens you up to snatch steals that can cost you the entire game, but at the same time, it's just like, well, 
you know, it's only two cards, Roma Guard and a Bergamo. So, you know, what's what's gonna happen? You know, surely you're gonna draw another Typhoon or something to counter his Snatch Seal or something to counter you being attacked that turn or taking a ton of damage. It's just one of those things. And then the beautiful thing about the deck is you gain LP to counter that kind of thing. So if you're constantly gaining life points from the deck and, and drawing cards and stuff like that, if your opponent does draw a snatch seal, it might not it might just not be game because you're constantly gaining life points to counter the fact that you're gonna get one turn killed. And I think I like that. So this deck is solid, I think I like it, it's very balanced and you know it's looking like it could have potential. I like that. So um, and the last card that we'll talk about is this card. Turn Cyber Dragon. Finally, Konami have listened. They have listened to our constant, you know, raging and shouting and you know complaining that we don't have any tune support we've not had tune support for a long ass time and we wanted tune support and what did we get we got tune cyber dragon it doesn't do anything but it does you know it does mean that we're getting the tune support so we might see something soon so if the opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters you can special summon this card from your hand and you don't need tune world for that effect this card cannot attack the turn it's summoned that happens with every tune card. If you control tune world, your opponent controls no most uh, tune monsters. This card can attack your opponent directly. That's where the brokenness comes in. But what I'm wishing for is we're going to see a new tune world card. I'm hoping that we don't see, you know, I'm hoping that Konami are going to just go, okay, what we're going to release is a new tune world card. We're going to release something that you know you pay thousand life points. And you can summon tune monsters, but if you do summon a tune monster, you're only able to summon tune monsters that turn, or you're not going to use your extra deck, or you can add a tune monster from your deck to your hand, and then you can't summon any monsters except tune monsters. That sounds fair. That sounds balanced. That sounds like no power creep to me. And you know, it's not the same. It's not the jankiness of what the tune world does now. You know, and you still have the searcher. You still have the searcher, Tune Table of Contents, or whatever it's called. I, I like that card, and you know, it's its own searcher within the deck, so you can start searching out these Tune Cyber Dragons. I think that's pretty good. So, if you guys did like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you're thinking about the Tune Support. Let me know what you think about Aromas, especially. Love the deck. I think I, I think it's a solid plant deck, and we could see more support for it. I'd like to see more support for it. I'd like to see this deck just, you know, dominate. I really would. It, it just it requires thought, and I think that it's about time we had a deck that required some thought. One thing I will mention is Kananga is mandatory. So if you gain life points, you target one spell trap card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. That can mean that your opponent call the haunted can be returned to the hand, even when it's not live. So that's the downside. The downside is your you know fiendish chains, your opponent's fiendish chains can be returned to the hand and then he can reuse them and you have no say in the matter. You have to target one spell track card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. You got no choice. So that's the downside. So keep that in mind and you know as always, like I said, comment, like and subscribe and this is Seth punching out.